Hey guys, so it's been a long time coming, but I'm finally back from the Camino de Santiago, the Camino Frances. I completed it in a total of 36 days uh, with 33 stages. So there were three rest days built in. I'm uh, much tanner and ready to talk about what to actually pack for the Camino. So let's take a look. I brought the Osprey Kite 36 backpack. Here it is. I absolutely loved it. It was perfect for the Camino. I would recommend not to even go bigger than this, maybe even smaller if you can. Um, the bigger you get, obviously, the more you tend to pack into it. So this is a great size. The most important thing is that you've tested it before the Camino. You've walked in it with weight um, for quite some time and it fits correctly on you. The one thing I mentioned last time that I loved about this backpack that it already came in with a built-in rain cover. This proved to actually be super useful on those rainy days. Even though I was wearing a poncho that covered my backpack, if I did not have this rain cover, things would still get wet within my bag. Highly recommend getting a rain cover. Uh, even if it doesn't come with your backpack, purchase one anyways. Next up, let's talk about footwear. This is, above all, the most important thing on the Camino. And it's actually really hard to specify what is the right shoe for anybody because it's different for everybody. Um, for my personal experience, this is what happened. I ended up bringing the Loa Renegades. There were a lot of boots on the Camino, which I was actually pretty surprised about. And while they proved to be great in the Pyrenees, they were perfect. We actually got terrible weather. Um, so they kept my feet um, nice and dry, uh, great ankle support. It was great for the Pyrenees. Everything after that, completely unnecessary. And I'd say about a week into wearing my boots, my feet started to hurt. I had suffered from swelling, um, and I think just because the boot weighs so much, every footstep was just becoming more harder. I got to a point where it was super unbearable to even walk in these. And in Burgos, I actually had to pick up some walking sandals. So I picked up these Keen um, Women's, I think they're the Venice Tube, style. Uh, I walked the rest of the way with these keen sandals and they saved my butt. My high recommendation is to know your feet before leaving the Camino. I would have actually visited a foot doctor, got to know more about my feet and how I actually walk. Do I over pronate? These kind of things. And then get a recommendation specifically for my feet on how I walk. Um, so maybe I needed a specific insole. Maybe he recommended or she recommended a specific type of shoe. Um, I would look into that a lot more before leaving the Camino because like I said you need your feet every day you use it every day and um, it is so painful if you don't have the right footwear recommend these sandals uh, you can definitely walk the Camino in the sandals I walked the rest of the way in it and uh, they were great if I were to do it again I would probably get a walking shoe and then bring these sandals as like my backup so I can alternate if I want but honestly the boots um, in my opinion they weren't really necessary um, but again it's different for everybody I did not suffer from blisters, um, so I had no blisters, thankfully, but I think because I made sure that I was going at a comfortable pace, I was walking pretty slow, my distances weren't too outrageous. I think the longest I went one day was maybe 20, 21 miles, which is pretty long. Uh, every stop I took off my socks, I aerated my feet, and I always put on lotion in the morning, these kind of procedures that prevented me, I think, from getting blisters. I also brought a flip-flop of some sort. So these were great, obviously, when you get to the albergue and you wanna take a shower. However, when I was starting to get foot problems, I actually couldn't walk in these either. It just was not enough support to walk around the towns and you know feel comfortable and supported just off the Camino. So I ended up walking everything literally in these sandals. Honestly, I just use the sandals for the showers. As you guys remember in my last video, I brought the McKinley Trucker sleeping bag, super lightweight, very comfortable. Um, it proved to be awesome in the uh, on the Camino. Um, highly recommend it. However, I noticed that uh, it wasn't that cold uh, at nights, at least in the albergue. So outside, yes. For me, there's a couple options. So 
I probably would have been just fine with the sleeping liner. And honestly, I recommend the sleeping liner if you wanna cut down the weight in your backpack. The Albertiers, they were warm inside. Um, a lot of times you have so many bodies in one area, one space, that it actually got really hot at night. Some people would open the window and then you close the window and then some people would close it, open it, it it's a game. It was always nice to have something to slide into, whether it was light or heavier. At the end of the day, it's your call. I would say bring one or the other. I, I would recommend this one, just a sleep liner and you'll be fine. And then you can throw the blankets that they have there on top of you from that if you get cold. If you guys remember, I sprayed my sleeping bag with some like, you know, bug spray, bed bug spray before. Um, while I didn't encounter uh, bed bugs, I'm very, very grateful. They can happen at any point and the spray actually doesn't really do anything. So I'd say sure, do it if it makes you feel better, but really in the end, it didn't end up doing anything. Just be aware of where you're staying. Definitely inspect the bed beforehand. Know what to look for. If the place feels kind of dodgy and gross, then don't stay there. Go to the next one. If they mention bed bugs, we did run into one situation where the owner was kind of iffy. He was about telling us something, and I, you know, I was talking to him in Spanish, and he's like, "Okay, uh, you know, we we encountered bed bugs yesterday," and I was like okay this is a this is a thing he says but don't worry because you guys are in a private room you are staying in like the other side like the other it's another hotel basically um so where the albergue was the shared space with the bunk beds they had cleared out everything he showed me he sprayed everything you could definitely tell that he was taking the right um precautions to make sure it was okay luckily for us we were in a completely other space like an almost like an apartment and so there was no way it was across the street that there could have been anything tracked or anything so um, luckily we were okay, but you know, a lot of people did encounter bed bugs during our time. I ran into a few folks and it's unfortunate and it sucks, but just know what to look for beforehand and I think you'll be fine. Okay, if you guys remember, I brought two trekking poles, which I am so glad I did. Um, I was actually contemplating just bringing one. Um, and that was silly because I definitely needed the two. It just proved to be so useful because there's so many hills on the Camino, not just even after the Pyrenees, you approach so many hills throughout the whole entire Camino that when you are exhausted and tired, this just helps so much. And it takes off the impact off your knees, everything. I had no knee injuries, thank God. Um, so I really love these things. The other tip why I recommend bringing walking poles is your hands tend to swell easily throughout the day when you're walking, just from just kind of having them lower. So when you have the poles, they're constantly in motion that your hands don't swell. So this is a great tip if you don't want swelling hands because they are really annoying, um, to bring your poles. And if I didn't feel like walking with my poles for one day, no big deal, I put them in my backpack and it was fine. If you don't want to travel with them, you can purchase them in Spain as well. There's tons of places that sell them. One thing on the poles, um, I mentioned the rubber bottoms. So as you can see here, the rubber bottom basically went through the, the pole. Um, and this is very typical. Uh, this lasted probably like, this happened to like three days in or four days in, like right after the Pyrenees. And then throughout the Camino, this was already my second set. One thing I recommend, maybe try, I did see like the thicker ones. There's ones that like rock, you could try those. They're nice to have, I really appreciated them but they will go through after some point, so maybe get thicker ones. I brought this water bottle and it was great. Uh, easy to refill, um, perfect in that sense. Great at night if I wanted it near my bed to just quickly grab, I loved it. The downside is I did not drink as much water as I should have on the Camino because it was behind me and it was a pain in the butt to grab and you know, I had to stop and take out my backpack or ask somebody to grab it for me. So a lot of times I just noticed I wasn't drinking as much because I had it in a bottle. I actually probably would have preferred to bring a bladder because it's quick, you make sure you're hydrated throughout the whole way, you know exactly how much is in it. I saw a lot of people with it and they really loved it and it wasn't as bad to refill in places like that. So um, I probably would have actually brought a, the bladder and um, and you can just pick, pick up a water bottle um, to have obviously on hand. Just to have the Camelback is just that it's easier, you're making sure you're drinking enough water throughout the day. And then the water ball is just great for like day trip, at bedtime, just to have it quick, easy access. Rain jacket versus rain poncho. So remember guys, I ended up bringing the rain poncho here and loved it. It actually was perfect for the Camino. I saw a lot of folks, especially in the Pyrenees when we were climbing the mountains that day, it was super, super windy. And they were struggling with their, their ponchos because they kept 
whipping around or they would get misplaced or it was just really, there was this one gentleman, poor guy, that ended up helping because his ripped down the middle and so it kept blowing and it wasn't really covering him. So at some point he had to like tie it to fix it and it was a mess. This one was great because it endured the heavy rain, the wind, um, even snow. And uh, yeah, I, I didn't get wet, like I said. Now, again, the main thing with this is it's not foolproof. So there were like, yes, after a while and heavy rain, you're still a little bit damp. Um, but for the most part, it covered me pretty well and my backpack and down to, like I said, my knees. So this was really, really great and I highly recommend it. Definitely do this versus the rain jacket. It's just not enough protection. Um, and then don't forget the rain cover in addition to this rain poncho. In my last video, I mentioned that I was gonna bring a bathing suit. I actually last minute decided to cut that weight out, even though it wasn't super, super heavy, anything counts, that I wasn't gonna use it. And I en ended up not having a bathing suit and it was perfectly fine. I didn't end up going swimming or anything like that. And then I guess my thought process was, if at any point I was gonna go swimming, I could just wear my underwear, my full underwear and my sports bra and it'd be fine. So I ended up not bringing my bathing suit. Howdy. So hats, um, I, if you guys remember, I originally packed a baseball cap in my last video. Uh, I wore that for a good portion of the Camino until basically the back of my neck was getting super sunburned. And I realized, okay, now I get why they make these silly hiking hats. So I decided to say, all right, forget it. I'm gonna give in and get this silly hat. And I'm so glad I did because in the middle of the day, it gets really, really hot walking the Camino and you wanna be fully covered as much as you can. So this back area of your neck um, definitely gets a lot of sun. So when I purchased this, that solved that problem. It might not be as stylish, but hey, you're on the Camino. Now I'm gonna talk about what items I did not mention in my last video, but I ended up bringing with me. The first item was a four port USB wall charger. So I just purchased this online on Amazon. What I love about it is basically you can charge all the necessary things you need in one go. So I had mentioned that I was going to bring a, um, a like extra battery pack charger. I did bring this and ended up never using it. So I thought, oh, I'm gonna be on my phone all the time. I'm gonna need to charge up. There's probably not gonna be a lot of outlets in these places. Well, I threw my phone most of the time on airplane mode. I took photos and videos like normal on airplane mode and it really conserved my battery. So by the time I got to the albergue, I still had some battery left, it was fine. I was never ever out of battery on during the Camino and I never used this and it's so heavy. I ended up shipping it back in Leon. Yeah, it was extra weight that I didn't need to carry. What really was helpful was having this four port USB wall charger. Um, what's great too is Instead, instead of wasting that space, other people can also plug in as well, so you can share with the community there. Um, but it's amazing, and it saved um, charging things all just at the same time. I didn't mention that I was going to bring packing cubes, but if you saw in my video, I actually packed it in these. So um, I did bring these, and I'm so glad I did. I just brought two. Um, it just kept me, kept me keep everything organized during the Camino and know exactly where I was putting my socks and my dirty clothes and I would use it on laundry days and things like this. So this came in uh, really handy. Um, so just any sort of packing cube to hold your clothes are super great. It's Mi Band 3. So basically it's kind of like a Fitbit of sorts, just a cheaper version. I bought it here in Spain for I think like 20 euros. And I, what I love about it is you essentially can get the time, the date, your, your tracking. So this was, I just wanted to know the distance that we were doing every day. And so it brings it down to every step, your mileage, you can do kilometers, um, you have the weather on here, you can check your heart rate. I don't know, this proved to be so useful and you actually, the battery's great on this thing. Um, I think I didn't have to charge it for like 13 days and uh, and it charged really easily either in the next like six hours or overnight. So loved it. The other thing I loved about it was at night I would set my alarm using the app and this would actually wake me up silently. So instead of having my phone go off in the middle of the morning, which a lot of pilgrims do, which is really annoying, it would just vibrate. And the vibration would literally wake me up uh, nicely um, to where I wouldn't wake up others around me. So 
highly recommend this, something similar that you can bring on the Camino. The other thing I ended up bringing in my backpack that I didn't mention in the video was three protein bars. I actually only ended up using one, I think, and it was just kind of like, ah, because I had it. To be honest, there are so many stops along the Camino. There are so many stretches. You will purchase food along the way. You can get a bocadilla sandwich or a bar somewhere and you can put it in your backpack. So I never felt like I was in a bind, not anywhere near food. So I'd say it really isn't necessary to bring protein bars unless you have something very specific that you really love that you know they don't have in Spain, then go for it. But really it's just added weight. Lastly, I talked about how I brought Vaseline and I would rub that on my feet every morning to prevent blisters. While that was proving great at the beginning, I think I was starting to get like a bit of a heat rash or something from it. So I went to a pharmacist um, somewhere in Spain and they had recommended that I purchase these two foot creams. Basically, this is like an equivalent to what I was putting on my feet to prevent um, blisters and things like that. Um, just a little bit softer, I think, and it's more of like a cream and uh, it's kind of like a second skin they put it and then this was at night just because my feet were so exhausted so tired just to kind of relax it more of like a natural cream and it these two really helped i stopped using the vaseline i put this on every morning and no blisters feet um my heat rush went away and everything was good so again test out what works for you but Highly recommend that you do put some sort of cream before in the morning um, heading out for your walk. A couple of more things I would highlight, my knee braces. I, I wore them every single day and I didn't have one knee injury, so thank you so much. Also, I had that long sleeve, if you remember, Mountain Hardware, um, it was white. I practically wore that every day because there was one day that I got really sunburned and I was like, uh-oh. So I kept that on and um, you know, when it got super, super hot, I would take it off, but um, I loved it. It was super comfortable. It was the right temperature every day and it protected me, my skin and things like that. One last thing as well, I get a lot of questions about maybe products that people should bring if they're afraid they don't have it in Spain. If this is something like you have eczema and you need to have a specific cream along with the Camino, I would highly recommend that you bring it. Obviously try to find a smaller bottle, but either way, this is something that you're going to want to have because you know you want it, you need it for your body. Chances are they probably won't have it in Spain. They might have something equivalent. It's hard to tell. So worst case you bring it and hey, they already have it. So not a big deal, you have it but you would hate to not bring something and then find out Spain doesn't have it and then you're out of luck. So I always recommend an air on the side of just bring it. You can always dump it later if you don't need it. One thing I mentioned in my last video that I was bringing um, that I didn't end up using was my black diamond headlamp. Um, we didn't actually use it until the end, the last, last day of the Camino. So I thought that we'd be waking up super early and I'd need it for these morning hikes Turns out um, that yes, people still get up super early, but it's completely unnecessary. The light is super bright uh, in these dark, dark rooms. I, I hated when somebody would actually use this light while trying to get ready because it was it would brighten the whole entire room. By the time you get up, you have breakfast, you head out the door, it's like seven, there's light out, it, you should be fine. If not, I would default and use my phone flashlight and it was perfectly fine. Because we carried this weight all along the Camino and it was the last day and we were super excited, we wanted to beat the heat, beat the crowd, um, we ended up leaving super early that morning. So I think we left at 5, 5.30 in the morning, something crazy. And it was dark once we left the town. <laughs> so we did end up using these. So if you are leaving, I guess at 5.30 in the morning, you will need it, but you really don't need to leave that early. Other than that, I'd say skip the headlamp, you don't need it. And when it comes to weight, um, ultimately my bag fluctuated. Your bag will fluctuate in weight as you add things, take out things. Throughout the day, you fill up your water, you're drinking water, maybe you pick up a sandwich, you don't eat it all, you carry your sandwich, maybe you have fruit in the morning, maybe you don't. You're going to have a fluctuation in weight. So I would say, you know, bring what you need, but also just try to keep your bag down because the more you ultimately put into it, it just gets harder for you along the way. So keep it light, but also know that the bag's likely gonna go and fluctuate within weights. All right, there you have it guys. So that is essentially everything that I found that was useful and not useful along the Camino, some things that I picked up along the way. Um, everything else that I didn't mention, uh, but I mentioned in my last video, I used and they were great. If you have any questions on anything that I mentioned in the video, 
or anything you'd like to see in future videos. Some ideas that I was thinking to talk about are definitely my injuries along the Camino, um, you know, overall what was my Camino uh, experience like, and kind of do like a summary and FAQ video. So if you have any specific questions for me about my Camino experience, go ahead and drop them in the comments box. I'd love to hear from you guys. And thank you so much for following along my journey. It's been a pleasure and uh, I'll see you guys again. Thank you.